the classical findings of vitamin deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, uh, takes two forms. There's a childhood form in which epiphyses are still open, and then there's an adult form in which epiphyses are closed. Uh, vitamin D deficiency in uh, human beings whose epiphyses are still open is called rickets because there is inadequate uh, calcification of the uh, osteoid, the cartilage appears to be overgrown. So kids with rickets have overgrown cartilage at epiphyses. What this would mean is that, for example, in a costochondral junction uh, in a rib, you would see little knobby areas, and that's why you'll often hear the term uh, the rachitic rosary referring to one of the classical findings in rickets. So we'll deal with this a lot more in the last uh, pediatric chapter. In adults, ep epiphyses are closed, and therefore the lack of uh, mineralization into the bone matrix uh, is what happens. And remember, osteomalacia is different from osteoporosis. In osteoporosis, you have inadequate bone mass. In, oste in vitamin D deficiency, osteomalacia, you have bone, but it is not adequately calcified. So if you took somebody's femur and whacked it against a, a, a wall, it would be like a drumstick in a normal person. In a um, osteomalacia, it'd be like hitting something with a rubber bat rather than a wooden bat because the bones are generally softer and there's no reason to show a lot of x-rays and gross pictures. You just have to understand the concept. Uh, osteomalacia, malacia means soft. It doesn't mean bad, it means soft. So osteomalacia, soft bone because of inadequate bone matrix calcification. Okay, last vitamin here is going to be uh, vitamin K. Vitamin K uh, has a very big role, and we'll be talking about it a little bit in other areas, but um, uh, uh, one thing that students frequently memorize uh, is the clotting factors, which are dependent on vitamin K. And quite frankly, you should just know almost rotely, it's 2, 7, 9, and 10. You know, if you look, when we get into the coagulation things, remember, not only do the classical 2, 7, 9, and 10 Roman numeral clotting factors are dependent on vitamin K, they are derived from vitamin K, but a couple of major powerful uh, anticoagulant proteins, uh, namely protein C and protein S, are also dependent on vitamin K. So it would be logical that deficiencies of vitamin K are basically going to interfere with clotting, and in most cases, it's, it's going to uh, resolve in inadequate clotting because of inadequate clotting factors. In other words, hemorrhagic or bleeding diatheses. Now, uh, like the other vitamins, vitamin K is needed in our diet, but unlike most of the other vitamins, a large part of it also is dependent on endogenous uh, production from uh, endogenous intestinal bacterial flora. So the vitamin K that we wind up using is not only from our diet, but thanks to our helpful gut bacteria. And uh, if you look at the classical uh, scenarios for vitamin K deficiency, you know, I like the word scenario because the students uh, think, oh, well, maybe it'll be on the boards. Uh, when you look at the classical vitamin K deficiencies, uh, Anything that has a reduced gut flora, for example, administration of wide-spectrum antibiotics or areas where there's just not enough bacteria there, perhaps there's not enough bowel there. Maybe there's been a lot of uh, uh, bowel that's been taken out. Also, fat malabsorption is a setting for vitamin K deficiency as well. So you have vitamin K deficiency. Uh, technically, if you had liver disease with reduced recycling of vitamin K, that would do it too, wouldn't it? So what's the effect? Well, it's bleeding. It's a bleeding diathesis. An estimated, what, 3% of vitamin K dependent bleeding diathesis is among neonates. So that's why, as you will remember, when you get through peds, you'll know that all the babies get vitamin K, all the newborns. 
okay, you know, we're done and it's quick and this will only be in a couple of minutes. So uh, I want to say another little thing I forgot to say at the beginning of the chapter. I, I want to say that I really, really, really unbelievably appreciate literally the dozens of emails that I get every day from all over the world encouraging me to go on. And specifically, uh, I had an email recently from the medical students in Bosnia, and I just felt the need to say that I wanted to dedicate this chapter to them. And I forgot to mention it in the first uh, slide, so I, at least I remember now. You know, when you get older, you basically lose a lot of brain cells, my son tells me. Um, and of course, I also want to mention that uh, I was particularly overwhelmed when one person from the uh, military told me that uh, there were many people in Iraq who are uh, awaiting my next uh, chapter as well. So thank you very, very, very much. End of this chapter. The next chapter will be the end of general pathology. It'll be a little bit of a milestone, and this is uh, really uh, reminds me that there's a lot more work to go on, and uh, I thank you very much.